Today we're going to talk all about health insurance plans for kids. So whether your kids play sports or they're just active little monkeys like my girls are, you want to make sure that your health plan really covers you and, cover, and covers your kids for the, the, the unexpected things that can come up, whether it's sickness or whether they get hurt. And so the first type of plan that you can have is an employer plan. And that's if the children, so like let's say you work for an employer and that employer offers health insurance. You um, have the option to add your family, you can add your spouse or your spouse and dependents um, or just your dependents to that plan. So it typically like the pros of these kinds of plans are that they're usually PPO type plans. So they're preferred provider organization type of plans and they're sponsored by an employer. So they're typically more expensive and better plans that you probably wouldn't be able to get on your own um, for the same or similar costs. And so the benefits of that is that you have access to the doctors and hospitals. So most likely the hospitals that you're gonna need to be a network or the pediatric urgent cares or your pediatrician will probably all take those type of plans. Um, and another benef benefit to having these plans is that a lot a lot of times the employer will subsidize so they'll pay for a portion of the parents plan the employee and sometimes even they'll pay for a portion of the kids plan as well it depending on the employer and so some of the things that are drawbacks of these type of plans are number one you're stuck you know you're dependent on the employer and so what if the employer lays you off or what if the employer um, changes insurance for the following year and goes to like a cheaper HMO type of plan and then you've got to switch doctors and all that you don't have the authority um, and the autonomy over your plan when it's tied to an employer um, and then another con would be that it could be really expensive to add the children to your plan um, and so all of those things are things to consider when it comes to employer plans so number two are CHIP programs or state-funded um, insurance programs for children. So the whole premise is, you know, everybody, every child should have access to affordable health care. And so these programs are in a lot of the states, and I'll use Florida as an example since that's my home state. In Florida, we have a program called Florida Healthy Kids. And Florida Healthy Kids has two options. First of all, it has year-round enrollment. So if a child is you know, outside of the open enrollment period for the marketplace, they can still get on one of these plans. At least the children can. These are not um, plans that the parents can get on also. And these plans, the way it works in Florida is you have two options. You can either do a subsidized pay, and for that you have to have low income, um, a low enough income that then the government will pay a portion of that. So you might get a plan for as low as $20 a kid, um, or you pay the full pay amount. So if your income is above a certain threshold, you'll have to pay full price for the plan. So here it's a little over 200 bucks per kid. It could get expensive if it's uh, if you have more than one kid, um, but that is something that's available year round. And also one of the drawbacks is limited, uh, limited access to doctors and hospitals depending on what city that you're in. So what I see is the trend is, is like the more bit, the busier cities, like a city like Miami, Fort Lauderdale, you're not gonna have trouble finding doctors who accept those plans. Whereas like if you live in a smaller town, it might be a little bit more difficult. The third type of plan for your children is the Affordable Care Act or the ACA Marketplace. So a lot of people don't know this, and it's a common question I get, but you kids can actually have their very own marketplace plan. So one of the things that I get is like from children age zero to 12 months, they're actually not, um, they're not eligible for the CHIP program, at least in Florida. They're not eligible for the healthy kids. It only starts at age one. So what do the people do in that gap period, right? In that zero to 12 months, you can actually get your child during open enrollment, their very own ACA plan. And those plans, typically it's like, it's like I always talk about ACA plans and marketplace plans. Most of the plans have higher deductibles. They're more limited networks. Um, they've gotten pretty expensive. You can find PPO options, not in every single state, but you can on the marketplace. You just really have to make sure that the doctors that you want accept those plans. The good side about it is that you can enroll during open enrollment or your, ch your child can, and you or you can enroll if you have a qualifying life event. So if a child is just born, that is a qualifying life event. Or also losing their health coverage, let's say through an employer, that's also a qualifying life event where then you can hop, you know, put your child and enroll them into a marketplace plan. 
Again, you know, sometimes higher deductibles, less access, but the good news is that you can have that on their own. Another place where I see this being a big benefit is in like a family. Let's say you have multiple children. Let's say you have three kids and one of your child, one of your children has some special needs where they're on some certain medication that, you know, is pretty expensive medication and the other two kids are perfectly healthy. Well, you don't want to have to have the same insurance plan or you don't necessarily have to have the same insurance plan for all three kids. And so for the child that needs a little bit more care, they need that certain medication, they can have their very own marketplace plan. The fourth type of insurance plan that you can get for kids is underwritten private coverage. And so these types of plans tend to be also have access to a PPO network, which we've talked about, great access to doctors and hospitals. One of the drawbacks of these plans though is that a lot of them do not uh, enroll children by themselves. So the children have to be on with at least one parent. You can have one parent and four children, that's fine, but one parent has to be on with with any of the children um, and so a lot of times like a family will come to me and they just want coverage for their kids because maybe they get covered the employee through their employer job or employer plan and that employer plan offers an enrollment for the kids but it's way too expensive so a lot of times on this private underwritten coverage because there's so many benefits to it and especially the cost of it tends to be one of the lowest as long as you medically qualify we're able to put the whole family onto the private underwritten coverage at a fraction of the cost of what it would be to put them on the stake program, the CHIP program, or on the Affordable Care Act marketplace on their own. Um, and again, access to the doctors and hospitals is huge with that. And a lot of times those underwritten plans, they have a lot of great accident and injury coverage built in where it'll supplement your plan so that you don't have to meet a really high deductible before you know the, they kick in for the common stuff like the you know broken bones and things like that. So if you have more questions on what types of plans are the best to enroll your kids in, don't hesitate to reach out to me at alexandracontos.com. And if you found this video helpful or you know somebody who would find it helpful, please share, share the video, tag them, and like and comment.